Good day, I'm Dr. Dave, and today we have Vinny Russo with us. And Vinny, welcome. Good to have you. Thank you for having me, Dave, I appreciate it. Hey, you have so many incredible accomplishments and there's so much to learn from you. I wanna get started right away. And the first thing is like, what about fad diets? Because uh, sometimes I want a little short, quick fix. Uh, do you have any suggestions for me? What are your thoughts? Yeah, um, fad diets. Well, my whole thing is diets as in D-I-E, okay? So they die. Uh, basically what it is, it, it's a vicious cycle, man. I mean, you, you have this initial weight loss right off the bat, and once you stop the diet, you get this weight regain back. It's almost like you're starting off with um, a hypnotic spinning circle. You're at this one point, and you go through this cycle, and you just seem to keep getting further away from your initial, your initial part. And the reason why is because of what the fad diets actually do to your metabolism. So if you think about it, when someone wants to lose weight fast, they usually have to cut calories. All right, so the belief is let's dramatically reduce our caloric intake while increasing our energy output. And this should induce weight loss. And you think that and you're like, yeah, let's go for it. But it's not a smart way to go about it because it's going to last only for a short time. So caloric reduction is a great way to actually rev up the fat loss process. But the problem lies within how many calories do you reduce at one time? So many people want the quick fix, like you just said. So they join in on these fad diets and they drastically cut their calories and they see this initial quick result and you see it and it hooks you and you're like, yes, this stuff works. But this drastic reduction in calories not only makes you feel lethargic over time, but it also puts off this starvation response, okay? So the body sees that as being in danger. It's like, wow, where's my energy? So I'm on the verge of starving. So it suppresses the calories being burned at rest. So your metabolism actually slows down. And what it does is it will hold on to the fat to be used as a backup plan for like a last resort. And it'll actually turn to your muscle tissue to start burning that for energy. Because if you look at calories, fat has nine calories per gram. Uh, protein has four calories per gram. Your muscles are mainly comprised, comprised of protein. So it's going to say, listen, let me burn that and let's save the more energy efficiency towards the end just in case I really get into some trouble. Okay. So essentially, you know, what's going to happen is that you start to lose this, lose this lean muscle tissue. Okay. And your body doesn't need to keep feeding that tissue anymore. So muscle tissue in general is very, very metabolic. It needs a lot of calories. I call them energy gluttons because they just soak up a lot of energy. They need it to keep it moving. Okay. So your body starts eating away at that. So it, it basically needs less calories at rest. So it starts bringing down your own natural metabolism and your metabolism will adapt to the amount of energy you feed your body as its main goal is to kind of balance out the energy intake with the energy output. So by restricting your calories and feeding your body less energy, it burns. The metabolism naturally begins to start burning less energy. So the more you restrict your calories, the faster and greater the down regulation actually happens. So what actually happens is that you stop losing fat a lot earlier than you expected. And people become stagnant and they realize this. It's like, look, you hit those three weeks with a fat diet, you lost all that weight, now all of a sudden you're stagnant. So what do you have to do? And usually people say, all right, well, let me, ca let me counter this with a little bit more of a caloric reduction, or let me just increase my energy output by exercising. And that just keeps degrading your metabolism even further and further. And that's how this vicious cycle begins. So how do we combat this problem? Like, what's, how do you do this? How do you beat this? And the trick is to actually stimulate the body to burn fat without setting off that starvation alarm. So how do you do that? You do very small increment cuts in your calories, and you, it basically keeps your body feeling energetic because you're not drastically cutting it, right? And it will keep your metabolism from getting too suppressed too quickly. You gotta take your time with it, you know? Persistence will pay off. Listen, if it was easy, I mean, we would all look like Greek, Greek gods. So stay away from the fat diets is, is, my, main, is my main point here. You yeah. don't well, what I like is you have so much science and research and expertise behind what you're saying. You know, I, I, some of us are just right starving for that quick wedding picture that we're going to be in in two weeks. Or uh, it's not worth it. It's to me, it's <laughs> not worth it because look, you're just gonna when you when you stop that initial diet for your wedding, what's going to happen? You're going to put you're going to start eating your your same diet again that you were doing before. Well, now with a suppressed metabolism, so your body doesn't know how to burn those calories. So what does it do? It stores them, and you got to work your metabolism back up. Yeah. So you just stuff in a worse in a worse position. That's the way I see it.
So if I starve myself for two or three weeks, I'm not going to have that beach body uh, that I want and I can take it. <laughs> Darn it. Might, yeah, listen, you'll have it for <laughs> that, that couple of days or two while you're out there. But once you start eating, yeah, it's going to go away pretty quickly. That's right. Well, it kind of reminds me what you're saying, uh, Vinny. It just seems like really if diets aren't the answer, then what is the solution? It sounds like you're saying it's got to be more of a lifestyle thing. If, of course. So you have to do what's best for you and what actually fits your lifestyle. So if it fits your lifestyle, you're most likely going to stick with it. Some people want to do intermittent fasting. Some people want to do carb backloading. It doesn't matter what diet strategy you take as long as you're able to live it. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and push a philosophy on someone saying that you need to eat six meals a day. Well, what if you can't fit in six meals a day, you know, you got to figure out what works best for you. And the best way to do that is through trial and error. Okay. You don't want to be miserable. You want to feel good. You want to have energy. You want to be able to enjoy your day. So you have to make healthy living a lifestyle, not a diet because with diets, it's saying that you're going to stop with a lifestyle. You live it for a life. So you, what you really need to do is you kind of got to, take a mindful and consciousness of what you're actually putting into your body. Okay. So I'm not saying that there's good and bad foods. I mean, people label them as good and bad foods, but there are some foods that are better than others. And you can almost think of them like a traffic light. So you have these traffic light foods, the red labeled foods, that means stop, get away from them. You don't need them like processed baked goods, bags of chips, things like that. What about my donuts? Donuts, red light. <laughs> red light. <laughs> yeah, red light, red light. Um, yellow would be proceed with caution. You know, these are the foods that are kind of like you're here and there, treats, uh, maybe your sour cream on a baked potato, extra butter here and there. You just proceed with caution with them. And then green light foods are the foods that you want to go for. Green means go. So you got your vegetables and your lean proteins and things like that. You've got to understand that you are what you eat and basically you eat what's in your kitchen. So if you go into your kitchen, label things as red, yellow and green and kind of clean out your kitchen because if you get rid of the stuff that you're tempted and it's not around it's basically the chances of you veering off your plan is slim to none if it's not around you if there's no temptation but what you got to realize is when i talk about lifestyle versus diet there is no perfect diet and i'm going to say that again like there's no absolutely positively without a doubt best diet for everyone there's not okay each individual comes in with their own characteristics their own body type their own dietary preferences, what foods they like to eat, what foods they don't like to eat, their budget, can they afford organic food, can they not, their own nutritional knowledge, how much do they really know, do they know everything, do they know nothing, and time, time is huge. Some people, some of my clients have enough time to where they could prep for six meals in a day. Some got to be on the go, they have to take care of kids, they got to cook their food, cook food for a husband, and then try to prep their own meals, and the time is restricted. So I can't sit there and say that every day, this one diet is going to work for every individual. Yeah. Okay. And that's where it comes into kind of being like um, a, a, being a great coach because with being a good coach, you need to not have this single nutrition philosophy. Okay. The body could do well under a host of different nutritional conditions and that's due to its adaptability. So you can't sit there and say this one thing is going to work for every individual. Okay. If I believe too strongly in a particular nutritional religion, and I fixate on the food, on what's good and what's bad and what not to take in, then I lose focus on what's most important, which is my client and their individual physiological and psychological health. And I need them to maintain their focus on the food quality. I need to help them eliminate any nutritional deficiencies that they have. And I need to help control their food intake by giving appropriate portion sizes. And we can do that together and live the lifestyle together. And then once you learn how to do it, you make it your lifestyle and it's not a diet. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, your tips for me personally and so many others have been so helpful because you allow us to eat foods that are good, that we like, that fit with our lifestyle and it's sustainable. You know, that's it. it. That's the key word, sustainable. Yeah. yeah, it's not just two days or two weeks or bite the bullet. It's actually, I could actually live this way and health could like become a part of who I am instead of exactly. like, a mad dash for something I want for two weeks. I couldn't say any better myself. That was perfect. Yeah.
Now, what about cardio? I sometimes think, okay, so I get my, my nutrition right and someone works hard to kind of clean it up a little bit and I guess get rid of the chips so they don't tempt you too much, right? Yeah. But, but my next thought is, don't a lot of us want to just do cardio and think if we just burn, 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 burn on the cardio, it's going to really help us lean out and get that weight loss and that feels yeah. experience. What's your thoughts on cardio? Because I know there's a lot of myths out there. Yeah, I mean, depending on what type of cardio you do, which one's better, fasted at night, post-workout, pre-workout. I mean, you could go into depth on all these different aspects. But you got to see cardio as just being a tool in your toolkit, okay? It's essential to burn extra calories, and they have the benefits for the cardiovascular health. But it can't be your turn to in terms of I need to get as lean as possible, so let me do as much cardio as I possibly can. Because you need to remember – that cardio is an aerobic exercise that reduces body fat, but it also reduces muscle mass as well. And remember what I said before, when you lose muscle mass, mass when you lose muscle mass, your natural basal metabolic rate, okay, your BMR, slows down. So you will need fewer calories at rest. So basically, you got to see cardio as a stress. So the human body adapts to stress very well. So with this cardio, it's a stress that you put on your body. And so when you do 20 minutes of cardio, let's just say three times a week, the body's slowly going to start to adapt to this stress and you won't get the same effect that you normally would when you first started off because mm -hmm. it becomes very energy efficient. So when you perform cardio daily, your body will adapt to reserve as much energy as possible. So the only thing to do is to add more cardio, right? Because once it adapts and you don't lose that weight, you become stagnant. Well, I got to add more. And you keep doing this until you're doing hours upon hours of cardio every single day, and you're sitting at the same body fat percentage. Now, I have a bunch of uh, bikini competitors that you know came to me with this problem. It's like, listen, my previous coach had me doing two hours of cardio a day, and I wasn't making any progress. And I'm like, two hours of cardio? That's, that's insane. Two like, minutes what? of cardio is a lot for some of us, right? <laughs> yeah. How are they going to do that? And they're only being fed a 1,000 calories, doing two hours of cardio a day. Uh, it was crazy. It was nuts. Um, but well, I'm, getting, I'm getting off tangent now. Um, basically, let me get back. You're saying more and more cardio isn't the solution, apparently. It's, so, it's, it's not. It's not because your body will adapt to reserve those calories as it downgrades your metabolism. So you need to put it this way. If you like to run for hours on end, okay, I'm going to give you the energy adapt adaptation response to the cardio. So the body over time will adapt and it will become very fuel efficient. So it's going to learn to burn the fewest amount of calories possible in the attempt to be successful. And by successful, I mean being able to run farther and run longer on the fewest amount of calories. So especially with long distance running, fat is the major source of energy. So your body will become extremely good on figuring out how to become really good at storing and holding on to that fat. Now, if you stop, so you're probably listening to me and you're like, well, listen, damn, I'm going to stop cardio altogether. But then your thought's going to be, if I stop my cardio, will I initially start gaining fat right away? Because now I'm not burning the calories. But what you got to understand is that your body has already downgraded your metabolism. So you're really burning fewer calories per day than you think. So how do you get rid of this problem? How do you combat this problem? The only way to get your metabolism back in check is to slowly start feeding yourself some food and kind of take a reverse cardio plan. So you're up to, let's say, I don't know, let's just say you are up to an hour of cardio a day. Start bringing it down slowly, okay? Start bringing it down. Go down to 45 minutes. Stay there for two weeks. Go down to 30 minutes. Stay there for two weeks. So on and so forth until you kind of get that baseline in order. And once you get the baseline in order, the best thing to do is manipulate your food intake to lose the weight and make sure that you implement an effective training schedule to add lean muscle tissue. The key mm -hmm. here is you want as much lean muscle tissue on your body as possible. And because of what I said before, it's very, very metabolic. So they burn calories at rest. Mm, I like that. Well, I, I certainly, I'm not a lover of cardio. So anything that says uh, I, I, there's another way is great. Do you, <laughs> do you suggest for the average person to try to integrate two or three times of cardio during the week or run 10 or 20 minutes or what, what's the average person like? This is a good amount of cardio and it's a nice mix of your diet and your exercise. Yeah. What's your thoughts on just just for just for cardiovascular benefits? I mean, two to three times a week, anywhere from twenty to thirty minutes. I mean, that's fine. Go for a nice jog, a nice walk outside, brisk walk, take in the air, enjoy life. That's fine. But if you're on a treadmill and you're staring at a wall, 
and you're hating your life, it's time to get off the treadmill, go outside, go even play sports, go, go shoot a basketball around, go play catch with your friends. Whatever it is, you could be active, that could still be cardio. You could go box for a little bit. Kickboxing is one of the most fun things I've ever tried in my life. I love it. And it's a great thing for cardio. And all you need is about 20 or 30 minutes. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, for those of you that are listening, uh, Vinny is my favorite weight loss, feel better, body healing, like fitness or t- nutrition coach of all time. I get to work with lots of people in the fitness professional world internationally. And Vinny, you're just like a class act in so many ways. I you, appreciate you, not, you not only live it and you do it, but your heart is to help people and you, you, you know the science behind it. So you, you do the hard lifting for us so we can just get the simple principles and live them out. Now, for those who are listening who don't know you as well, what are some things I need to know about you? Give us just a few things before we close up today. Well, well let's, let's forget about me right now. And I, I want to talk about what, if you were my client, what I really want you to know about me. And the main thing is, is that I really, really want you to know that I truly care about you and your overall health. Okay, I'm here to guide, mentor, and educate you. Okay, I want to make this your lifestyle. I'm not here to just help you lose weight, see quick, short-lived results, and then just let you go and throw you into the wolves. Okay, I want you to understand why and how to live the lifestyle. Then what you could do with that information while you're living it, you could pass it on to your family, friends. When you have children, you could pass it on to your children. And it's like a snowball effect where everyone starts living that healthy, fit lifestyle around you. Um, as an educator at heart, as well as my career as a high school science teacher, I do firmly believe that education is the key to better health. And I wanna give my clients an education on why they're doing what they're doing. Because this, I wanna get this education and I wanna structure it and focus it so that together, the client and I were able to master their health, okay? I wanna be here to teach the answers and the fundamentals to the questions, not just give out and hand out answers. Okay? I pride myself in giving a nice holistic perspective that will empower my clients. To become their own health master that's that's my main objective okay and the only way they do this is through the education of the how and the why and develop the understanding of the complexity of health and nutrition so and on a closing note my clients should believe that i'm here to help them break down any barriers that they feel that are holding them back that i'm here to help them grow into the person that they aspire to be as a client of mine i want you to think of me as that light okay that light that guides you down your pathway so you're on this pathway towards your goal and your success, and all I am is that light showing you the right direction, and we get there together, and that's what I want. That's awesome. Well, you're, you're terrific, Vinny. I mean, not only have you lived it and you're doing it, but now you've committed your life to helping others, and if you're out there and you want more information, Vinny can be, be reached on his website, vinnyrusso.com, V-I-N-N-Y-R-U-S-S-O. Um, com, vinnyrusso.com, and uh, reach out at Vinny's knows what he's saying he's he and he's here to help and you're making a difference thanks Vinny, for today bye-bye dave i appreciate it so much thanks for having me